Hello, fellow classmates. Um, my name is Austin, and I'm going to be doing a sort of video on the end of this uh, Ender's Game book. Um, this book, at first, I was on my eh about it, but got really into it. Good read. I like reading. Um, so, one of the major themes of this book is, you know, on the control. Like, what control do we really have? And Sort of the basis is, you know, the, the main character, Ender, is being put through these steps to make him this great leader, whether he wants to be or not. Um, one of the most interesting things that we find out at the end of the book is all the simulations that he's been practicing at command school, and the, uh, his final exam is he was actually he was actually commanding real people, and uh, he didn't know that, that obviously throughout the, you know, the whole series, but um, his final examination is uh, is uh, him fighting the buggers uh, the, with the, you know everybody, and he he passes it by you know essentially what he puts it as genocide and uh, destroys the whole bugger world by you know, getting through and dropping the nuke and. Uh, uh, when it happened, everyone else was cheering. Um, you know, they were all happy, and then he was he was confused until they finally found out, and then it just hit him. You know, he he's been created. You know, from this you know this little kid. You know, this he was six when they took him, five or six, and he was didn't really wasn't very. He wasn't a leader back then. But now he's this powerful, you know, instrument, or as some, uh, you know, people that have done research on this book call him, you know, call them tools of war, or, you know, gears uh, in a machine. And unfortunately, uh, he's been used as this instrument, but ultimately saves uh, humankind. Uh, he is. I would say he's usually he's put he's separated from everybody else during battle school, so he's a lot different from the other children. Uh, you know, maybe not strength wise, but he definitely uses his wits and his smarts against uh, the other strengths, and eventually, you know, essentially beats all you know almost every game or almost every challenge he's put up against. So, um, you know, he. It, I'll give him credit. I, well, I probably couldn't be able to do this, but towards the end, when he, you know, he every for every battle he fight, you know, he says, you know, for every battle he has, he he not only gets to know his enemy, and then when he faces the enemy, he not only beats them, but he destroys them. In the case of Stilson, uh, Bonzo, all that cases, he finds out he actually killed those guys. He didn't mean to, but you know. It's the same case as uh, this genocide that happened. He, he didn't want to, you know, mass murder and completely, completely destroy the buggers because, you know, he's not this nice killer. He's not a mass murderer. But in order to, you know, essentially get his objective of winning the war, this is what was decided what was necessary. Um, so... As once he won, he was uh, thankfully united with her Valentine at the end. Um, she was, you know, retired from her block in uh, Demo Demosia Demosius, I think it's called. Um, so she has elected to join and be one of the first people to uh, help colonize you know, out greater off of Earth and all that. So they meet up and then they travel together. Um, I think it's a, a two-year voyage, and then if they were to come back, it would be 50 years later. So, you know, none of the people that they knew, but that's sort of how they wanted it, because Ender couldn't go back to Earth yet. And plus, uh, and also with uh, Peter eventually, you know, taking over, and he would probably use Ender, just like, you know, Colonel Graff has, you know, used him on his side, and... Even though, yes, Peter at first was trying to stop the war by being locked, stop the war with humans, it really didn't. It probably wouldn't have turned out very good for Ender. Um, 
And so Valentine, as they're traveling, you know, almost near their destination and all that, she, she writes sort of like a, a synopsis or a, sort of like a history series, if you want to call it that, um, which, again, comes into play, you know, with, you know, the, them starting over as a colony, you know, whether they want to follow religious sects that were fought on Earth or they want to start again. Um, but what's interesting is when the most interesting part is when Ender they make it to the colony and Ender starts looking for other places for other people to come colonize. Um, he's riding around, you know, the asteroids. And, uh, he he sets down the ship, tells the little kid to wait behind, and then he goes and uh, he actually finds the scene where um, the giant from being killed early in the book, sort of the giant skeleton along with the whole, you know, the playground, and, you know, and then he goes to the mirror, there was no snake or anything, but this is real life, and he finds the mirror, and behind the mirror, he finds the last larva or egg of the buggers, and it's, and that's where the whole speaker of the dead aspect comes in, is that, you know, he must now, he, he, he was the ultimate destroyer of the buggers, but now he is, must be the ultimate savior of their race. He this time he wants to, um, you know, eradicate any war that might happen and be the speaker for them for what had happened because this book is based upon you know the the famous quote if you don't know if you can't understand the other fellow I believe he says if you can't understand the other fellow then how do you know he's not trying to kill you and in many aspects it's a very true statement but um, he must now take care of this lava egg and find a good spot you know to help build this civilization back up again and he must be the speaker for them because they obviously there was no form of communication made between them so uh, that's where that whole speaker of the dead comes in, and I think there's another book, you know, another book in the series that talks about that. So, you know, as Ender and Valentine are in this new colony, they must create a new sense and a way of life uh, for themselves and for other people looking to get away, start over, fresh and new. So. That's Ender's new challenge. You know, he was he's been training and raised up to be this uh, this you know this big leader, very powerful, have all the aspects of a good leader. You know, so he may, he's smart, he's a talent. He doesn't get his emotions too intermixed. So uh, that's one important thing to take away from this is Ender. You know, through all his hardships, through all his training. You know, he never lost sight of who he essentially really was. He's not this killer like Peter. In my in my in my terms, I would su suggest that he might be a mix of both Peter and Valentine. You know, he's got Peter's, you know, determination. Like he's got that that you know, like he said, that killer instinct, that killer aspect. But he's got Valentine's smarts and you know, emotional control, which allows him to be smart and act. The way he should in uh, different situations. So um, I think now definitely want to continue reading this series and find out more about you know life goes on and you know uh, there's other books on like little side stories like Ender Shadow about Bean. Uh, you know we don't we don't find much out about Bean, but I have a feeling he's very similar in the way Ender's situation was. So, again, Ender's Game, good book, good read, and I highly enjoyed it. So, thank you.